Hey Cornerstone, well we just finished a little mini series where we're looking at the kingdom stories of Jesus, the parables of Jesus, and we looked at the wise and foolish builder. We're learning what it means to be a foolish builder, what it means for us to be a wise builder. In other words, we're looking at how do we wisely build our lives upon Jesus. That's what we're getting at. And in last week's weekly devotional, I looked at the life of Peter briefly, that Peter moved from being a foolish builder to a wise builder, building his life upon Jesus, the one who is the rock. Well, scripture is full of so many different people and characters. And I love it because it shows us ourselves oftentimes, if we allow it. We can see ourselves in so many of these people and how God grabs hold of our lives and changes us. Well, I want to look at somebody today. It is James, not the disciple of Jesus, James, but or the apostle, but James, the brother of Jesus. We don't have a whole lot on the, on the brother of Jesus. Um, we know that he was a significant leader in the early church. We see that in the book of Acts. And then James, of course, wrote the book of James, the letter of James to the church. And many New Testament scholars say that the book of James is like the Proverbs of the New Testament. In other words, it is packed full of wisdom. James, sh James shows us in his, in his letter what it looks like to build our lives upon Jesus. In fact, this is what James says. It's chapter one, verse five. James writes this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. I love this because James is writing about trials, the storms of life, and then he, he knows that we need wisdom to navigate those storms as we looked at over the last couple of weeks in the series we've been in. And we need to ask God for this kind of wisdom. But here's what I wanna look at. James didn't arrive on the scene as this wise man, this wise builder who built his life upon Jesus, who was his brother, or I guess more uh, to be technical, his half brother. No, he actually started off as a fool. We've got a couple scriptures in the gospels that shows us what James's life looked like or what his family life looked like. Listen to this. This is from the Gospel of Mark. This is after Jesus is doing these great miracles. Jesus is teaching with great authority. And then this is what we find. It's in Mark chapter 3, verse 21. When Jesus's family, that would be James, his brother as well, when Jesus's family heard about these things, all the things that Jesus was doing, his healings, his authority, they went to take charge of him. In other, in other words, they, they grabbed him. They're like, come here, Jesus. And then this is what it says. For they said, he is out of his mind. Do you see what's going on here? If James is a part of this crew, he's saying, Jesus, you're nuts. You're out of your mind. And in this statement, you begin to see that James is the fool. He's not building his life upon what Jesus is saying. He's confused. He's like, this is my brother. What's going on here? You're out of your mind. He's a fool. We get a little bit more here in John chapter 7, verse 5, this is what it says, for even his own brothers, again, including James, did not believe in him. We see James is this person who isn't building his life upon Jesus. He thinks he's out of his mind. He doesn't believe in him. He's a fool. He's a foolish builder. But then we get to the book of James, and we see this man who is full of wisdom following after Jesus. In fact, this is what James says at the very beginning of the letter. He says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That statement's said by a man who is building his life solidly on Jesus Christ. He has come to the conclusion of who Jesus is, what Jesus has done. Something changed. Something moved him from being a fool to being wise. What happened? Well, again, we don't have much to go by in the story, but there's a fascinating little passage in the book of 1 Corinthians. And it's this majestic chapter on the resurrection of Christ that Paul writes. And in this chapter, Paul is saying that Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he appeared to many of his disciples, the apostles. He appeared to about 500 people. But there's this curious phrase, and this is what it says. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to read verses 3 and 4 and then verse 7. Listen carefully. Paul writes this, For what I received, I passed on to you as the first importance. In other words, this is critical. And he goes on, That Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, 
And he goes on to say that he appeared to many. And then it's verse 7. Listen carefully. Then he, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Isn't that curious that Jesus, the resurrected one, would come to his brother, who we know did not believe in Jesus, who we know thought Jesus was out of his mind, who we know by all of this that James was a fool. And Jesus, with his tender mercy and his glorified resurrected body, comes to James, his brother, and you wonder what that conversation was like. And I can just think about it. You can think about it. Use your imagination. Jesus' eyes looking at his brother, the one he grew up with, the one who knows everything about him, quite literally in the sense of he grew up together with Jesus. And Jesus looks at James and he says, it's me. I'm the one. I'm the Messiah. I am the Christ. I'm the one who came to deal with your sin, with the sin of the world. Come and follow me. And that changed everything. James encountered the risen Jesus. And that changed everything. He moved from being a foolish builder to being a wise builder. And I love this because that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about us encountering Jesus, being honest where we're at, and and moving from being the fool to being wise because we build our life upon Jesus. This is what James says later in the book of James, in his letter, and it sums it all up and we'll end here because I think this is exactly what it means to be a wise builder, to build our life on the words of Jesus, on his death and resurrection. Listen to what James says. This is James 3, verses uh, 13 through 18. This is in the New Living Translation. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from above. James is talking about being a wise builder, but then he looks at what it means to be a fool. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness or good things of justice. That's wisdom from above. That's what it means to be a wise builder. That's what it looks like when we build our life upon Jesus. We have a wisdom that is from above. And we need to do what James did. We need to encounter Jesus. And so as we prepare to enter in to Holy Week, we enter in to Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. As we enter into it, we have a great opportunity to encounter the risen Jesus, the one who is our wisdom, and the one who generously gives his wisdom, which is wisdom from above. Amen.